Hi, it's Peter here from Tech Explorations. Now, as you may know, I'm working on a book for KCAD. Uh, and in this book, I cover a lot of nice features in KCAD 5 and, of course, a lot of uh, general uh, you know, uh, PCB computer edit design issues to help people who are interested in doing this sort of thing but have never done it in the past be able to create boards a little bit like the one that you're looking at here. This board here, is a four layer PCB. It's one of the uh, projects in the book and I've got two versions. I've got the two layer PCB and then the four layer PCB. I did the four layer PCB just to show you how you can do that sort of thing. I've, I've had questions from students of the original KiCad course. Uh, how can I do multi-layer PCBs? And I took the opportunity to give you an example here. Now in uh, this project, I want to show you a couple of quick things. First of all, um, it, it is not a, a complicated project, but the way that I built it, uh, I, I did so in order to show you how you can use a few interesting features for projects that do become rather complicated. Now, a complicated project was probably not a good idea for an educational book uh, because I'm, I'm, I don't want to bog the student, I want to inform the student. But this was a, a good example of what you can do with hierarchical uh, sheets and to be able to distribute elements of a schematic, of a circuit among different sheets. So what I've got is an Atmega microcontroller here and uh, I've got a clock circuit or clock uh, integrated circuit, the DS1337S Plus. And I've got a couple of EPROM chips here as well to give a little bit of um, memory capacity to this uh, little gadget. And I also have a bunch of connectors. So because, oops, because this schematic in this root sheet was getting a little bit crowded, I wanted to keep things simple. So I created the schematics or I place the schematic symbols in a separate hierarchical sheet. So you can see in the map that I've got the connectors sheet that is uh, a child of the root sheet. And I'm using uh, hierarchical pins and labels. You can see these D2, D3, D4, for example. Uh, these are la hierarchical labels and they connect to the equivalent hierarchical pins on the root sheet. And that's an easy way to create a, an easy to read uh, schematic that spans over multiple sheets. A apart from that, everything else is exactly the same. So when you want to start doing the layout for this schematic, you just export the nets and then import the nets uh, file over to PCB new. So the interesting thing here is not the finished version of this PCB, the routed version, but the unrouted version, because I quickly want to show you how you can use the auto router to which KiCad can connect to. It's an external auto router. It's called free routing. So how can you use free routing to quickly route a board like this? And for the sake of this demonstration, I'll use the four layer PCB. So you can set your layers this way so you can by default you go for two layers that's how PCB new stars but I've gone for four layers and then I've set the roles of the different layers here so you can see I want the, the, the front copper layer to convey signals the same thing with the inner with the two inner copper layers and then I want the back layer to give me uh, mixed routes so they will combine power and signal i want probably i could have just gone with power right so i could have routed just the power traces in the back copper and there's plenty of other space in the other three signal layers for that but i've gone for mixed all right so the other thing that i'm going to do next is to delete all the routes I'm going to go for global deletions and I want to remove, um, I'm going to remove the zones as well and the tracks. And yeah, I don't have anything locked there. So this is going to clear up everything. And there you go, I've got a totally unrouted board. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to then export 
the Spectra DSN file, which is the file that I am going to import to uh, free routing. So export that, I'm going to override the existing file and replace it. So next, let's go and start free routing. You can either do this on the command line, so you can just type Java, uh, the jar switch, and then the name of the jar container that you want to execute, just like with any other jar containers, or you can simply double click on the jar container itself. I'm going to browse to my project. So this is my practice project that's in here. And here's a DSN file, so open that. So here is the unrouted uh, board with the footprints. I'm going to just do a couple of things here, uh, not so much in terms of configuration, but uh, just to show you what you can do with the free route GUI interface. So you can uh, display your board in different ways. You can see this one allows you to see or unsee the unrouted nets. Uh, I'm going to use this little window that allows me to highlight certain aspects of the board live as the auto writing process takes place. Uh, I'm going to play around with these levers later when I begin the auto routing. What else? I've got the object visibility. I turned that on already. Um, let's move on to layer visibility. This is interesting because as this board is being routed in four layers, I'll be able to use these levers to highlight one layer over the other can get a better idea of what's happening. And there's a few other uh, you know, bells and whistles like that. Uh, I'll bring up the colors as well. I'll put that down here. So you can see as each route is created at uh, in a different layer, it will use the color for that layer. All right. Um, the information uh, the, in the parameters that the auto router is going to use to do the routing come from PCB news. So there's not much else that I need to do here other than clicking on this button to start the auto routing. There you go. And as this is happening, I can make things appear or disappear. You can check out the vias. You can see so far I've used 20 vias down here, and this is the first pass. So the, this auto router is, seems to be fairly clever, even though it, com it can com even if it completes a trace uh, in a subsequent pass, it may undo that trace and try to redo it in a better way. Now, I'm not sure exactly which algorithm it's using here. I guess it's trying to optimize by shortening the traces and by reducing the numbers, uh, the number of vias and um, things of that sort as it's working towards optimization. Let's see if I want to see what's happening in the inner copper layer, the first one I can turn these off. And there you go, you've got the green tracks that are the inner, the first inner copper layer. Right, I can just uh, turn everything else off and let's see how we're doing with the back copper layer. Great, there's not much going on there. It's quite light in traces. Uh, That's where I plan to also place the uh, copper fill later. And it looks like it's completed. So post route completed and we don't have anything unrouted. So I'm going to save the spectra sessions file, which is the file that I'm going to import to PCB new in a minute. Let's go back to PCB new. So here is our um, unrouted board. And I'm going to file import spectra session. And the SES file is the one that um, the auto router just exported. So open that and there you go. Um, it's all done. Do a uh, DRC and that is fine. There's nothing unconnected. We've got three messages about footprints that have got no courtyard defined and that is fine. You can see the little arrows are pointing to graphics, right? So this arrow is pointing to the uh, made with KCAD graphic. If I look at the 3D viewer for a better look turn it around, it's this. So this is a graphic that is uh, 
import it into the footprint sorry, into the board as a footprint and we didn't create or the, the designers of this logo didn't create a um, footprint sorry a courtyard uh, outline for it like they have for the other footprints on the board so all of these other footprints you can see it with a, a green outline here uh, they do have courtyards so PCB new and the DRC if it doesn't find a courtyard it will uh, mention that so here's another graphic down here it's a graphic imported as a footprint it doesn't have a courtyard so you get a complaint but you can ignore it safely and this board can now be manufactured not a problem at all so that was a quick demonstration i'm going to save this file a quick demonstration of how easy it is to create four layer pcb boards that you now without the auto router this would take you quite a bit of time to actually i did try to do this manually and uh, a couple of hours later and trying to figure out like quite tough problems in uh, getting the traces across uh, I decided to just go for the auto router. This is a good example of when the auto router is a good choice. I should also mention that uh, I, I use the auto router to, to route the exact same project path in the two layer PCB version. And again, it didn't really have any problem. Um, it, uh, it, did, it did use additional vias, but uh, the routing was successful and it was also done automatically and I didn't really have to do any tweaking and improvements to the routing. Um, from this point you can decide to add a copper fill which uh, is not a problem actually let's do that really quickly right now. So I'm going to go and get our field zone I'm going to start it up here perhaps yeah I'm going to put in the back copper layer and connect it to ground and accept the rest of the defaults. So let's route it like this. Sorry, let's uh, draw it like this. Just try to go as close as I can to the edges. All right. And let's fill it. Uh, oops, I need to click carefully on the border. down here fill all right uh, and I'm going to click on this button here so that I can actually see the field zones I've got it uh, I've, I've got it hidden so that I can see the traces but I can enable it and see it like that so see all the ground pads have got reliefs that connect the field zone with the ground pad same thing happens here and here so all of the pads that have ground on them are connected via these reliefs to the field zone great and let's check out the 3d viewer so we'll look at the back yeah and you can see the field zone is drawn in the 3d rendering of the board great this is awesome so i hope that you found this useful um, looking forward to any comments that you may have and uh, hopefully we'll have this book ready soon can't say exactly when <laughs>